Welcome to Nerds with Mike's episode one. It's a trap. Good afternoon, good evening, good morning, whenever you're choosing to listen. I am Travis. I'm Justin. And I'm Maxwell. Well, hello. Uh, so uh, thanks for tuning in. Uh, for those of you that uh, this is your first episode, we have actually recorded two previous episodes as kind of test pilots, uh, but this is our first official uh, number one episode. Number one. Number one. Unless you, we really dislike it. Yeah. yeah it could get scrapped. You may never even hear it. It might be point eight at this point. Who knows? <laughs> so, uh, so let's start off. Uh, we always like to start off our podcast by talking about you know what we've been up to. So, Justin, why don't you go ahead and kick us off and tell us what you've been up to? Well, I've not been doing much uh, work in school, and then on the nerd front, I've been playing uh, MLB on PS4. But one uh, game I've gone back to, it's a, an old flame of mine. Please don't say Rainbow Six for this, <laughs> like the I've, second podcast in a row. I've been playing a lot. No, I've been playing. It's an early access title on Steam. I've been playing Rust. Have you ever wondered what it felt like to be naked and just with nothing but a rock? Don't they have a TV show about that called Naked and Afraid? I think so, yeah. <laughs> yeah. But no, personally, I've never wondered what that felt like. Me neither, but this game makes me feel that way. So it's it's pretty nice. Maxwell, have you ever wanted to be naked and, and afraid and with a rock? I've never wanted it, but only in two scenarios have had to be in that position. <laughs> only so, two? Yeah. That's pretty good. Yeah. That's successful. We Any of those recently? We won't talk about those on oh, the Oh, okay. 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 <laughs> That's a different show. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh but other than that, uh I've played you know, like I said I played some Rust and really that's about it. Okay. What about you, Maxwell? Um, well, as you know, I went on vacation was in Florida, so during that time I actually uh was playing Super Metroid again, which because my friend Cassie uh, pretty much only has a Super Nintendo, <laughs> which is totally fine with me. Um, so I got about halfway through that game and probably like an hour because I'm just like, I know where every damn thing <laughs> is anymore. <laughs> and I just love it. I could play it every day. For sure. I, I feel like that's one of my all-time favorites, as you know, Maxwell. We've talked about that game. We've played it together. But that's one of the ones that I wish that they, they don't even need to make a 3D version of it, but like an updated side-scrolling version would be fantastic. Completely agreed. Anything else? Or is that pretty much it? Did you have a good time on vacation? Uh, I did. And as you guys know, I interviewed for a job. So <gasps> first yes. official podcast, potentially last <laughs> official <laughs> podcast. In person. In person, yeah. yeah. So Well, well, congratulations, but we're uh, sad to see you go. Well, thank you. It's a shame. Uh, I'm sure the International Space Station, though, they're really going to, they really need a guy like you up there. <laughs> yeah. so, Cape Canaveral, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah that's, exa- that's exactly Long right. distance podcasting, yeah. Yeah. yeah up you in can space. listen. We'll, I'm sure we can beam the pod up there if you listen to beam it. The yeah, beam. beam the pod. Beam the pod. With your thing. <laughs> <laughs> Comes up every episode. episode every episode, yes. Um, well, <laughs> moving on. So, me this week, I actually haven't got to play a ton of games. Uh, well, actually, no games, in fact. I've played zero games this past week. Uh, but what I have been doing is I have been uh, w- catching up on some stuff on Netflix. I actually just went through, and Justin, I know you're going to say you've never seen it because you've never watched Daredevil, but uh, Jessica Jones, I finally finished that series, which was uh, really good as well. Maxwell, did you watch that? I- I, no, I don't have Netflix. Oh, I'm, well, a Hulu, well. I'm a Hulu man. So you oh, Hulu wow. and commit instead of Netflix and chill, I guess. That's right. Yeah, that yeah, yeah. Exactly for real. Right. Yeah, yeah. So any ladies commitment. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. So I mean, I, I finished Jessica Jones, and that's really about it. I'm looking to actually get back into playing some games tonight. I would actually like to level up in, Divi- in the division. Oh gosh. Because uh, I got a lot of update content coming, which we'll talk about later on the show. So, but other than that, that's it. So Justin, you're gonna tell us about some new releases coming up. Yeah. Uh, since our last half episode. Episode, whatever you want to call it, uh, there's been a few things in the gaming world that's come out. On the smaller end, or the lower end of the spectrum, you know, there's MLB, uh, the show 16 for PlayStation 4. It's the only quality baseball game out, if that's your thing. Today, on Xbox, uh, Quantum Break came out. I played it for about an hour, and I can say that in that one hour, it is pretty decent. It's also coming out on PC, I believe, and if you pre-ordered on Xbox, you get the PC version for free. The Big thing that came out, uh, I think it was last week or maybe the week before, was is Oculus Rift. A couple test episodes ago, we talked about VR and how I thought it was a giant turd. And we'll talk about that 
we'll talk about the turdiness that is uh, VR <laughs> later on. Turdiness. <laughs> the turdiness. But uh, another one game that came out for it that is VR uh, compatible is Adrift. It's a space uh, game that has been compared to like Gravity, the movie Gravity. It looks pretty intense. The reviews have been mm, mediocre, but it does look. It, it's visually pleasing. Yeah, that's Which good. Which is the whole point if you're going to strap a turd to your eyeballs and <laughs> yeah, look around, gonna, right? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> better be the best looking yeah. turd you've ever seen. Now, today, though, if, if you're listening to this like moments after we publish it, it's, it's a Tuesday. It's April 5th. A movie came out today. It's a little movie. I don't know if you've heard of it. It's called Star Wars The Force Awakens. It's, I've heard of it, I think. Yeah, it's, I, think it, maybe, I think it made a little bit of money at the box office. I'm not sure. It came out today, and I feel like they missed a huge, a huge opportunity by not including any footage for Rogue One as a special feature. I, I still am in awe that we have not seen anything from this movie. No footages, nothing. teasers, nothing. Because it's out this year, is it not? Like the yeah, holidays, I, December or something. December, yeah, and there's nothing. I think we had a Force Awakens trailer the November before the movie came out. Here we are in April, and I mean, they may not have even filmed anything. Well, here's the <laughs> thing with Star Wars and big things, uh, big movies like that, and I and Batman v superman because you can't it's just not versus what? I mean, come on <laughs> anyway but those movies were so big that the trailer could have just been the title and everyone would have gone to see they it like star wars mind, they, yeah. they don't even need to worry about right advertising they could just be like yeah the movie's out this date and then everyone will go see it yeah yeah and if you think about like how soon they started advertising star wars you know it felt like that campaign ran for like a year to year and a half of ads and teasers and all that stuff it did get delayed though i think it was supposed to come out in may and then it got pushed back to december and then like harrison ford like broke his back and then he crashed an airplane and a lot of weird stuff happened while they were and and then he died but spoiler alert in case case you haven't uh, seen the movie (laughs) oh my gosh just kidding he didn't die yeah he didn't die or did he who knows okay but in in other star wars news some sad news actually the actor who portrayed Admiral Akbar, it's a trap. Eric Bowersfield passed away yesterday at the age of 93. Jumping from one huge film series to another, uh, Travis. So we just wanted to give our thoughts. Well, Max Juan and I, you know, not so much Justin because he didn't see the movie, but loser. Yeah, we wanted to talk about uh, Batman versus Superman. Uh, Batman v Superman: Dawn of Justice. Travis, oh, get I, it right. <laughs> I apologize, sir. Uh, you know, we wanted to talk about it because. I wrote a brief, you know, kind of tried my hand at writing a review, but we wanted to, you know, talk about, you know, our different thoughts and opinions on the movie because I've seen it twice now and Maxwell's seen it once and uh, we just want to kind of give our opinion on the movie. So, Maxwell, what did you think? I assume we're going to talk about spoilers. Yeah, that's fine. So, yeah, if it, you have not seen the movie, pause this, go see the movie, come back, and then listen to our review on it. Exactly. For me, honestly, I went into it thinking this is going to be junk, like... Green Lantern or half of the DC movies, I feel like. Well, let me pause you there and just ask. Was that because of the reviews that it was given like by well, Rotten Tomatoes? or? Good question. I, I never look at critic reviews. Usually if it's really low, I'm like, it's probably good. Okay. So in this scenario, I was like, okay, it's probably actually pretty good. But I just went into it thinking it's going to be way too much because in the trailers, they just let you see everything that happens. I feel like scene for scene was almost in the trailer. Ben Affleck, honestly, just like most of the internet, (laughs) was a little concerned about him as Batman or Batfleck. Correct. Yeah. Uh, But honestly, I I really enjoyed it. There were a few scenes that had me kind of thinking that I'm not going to be enjoying the movie, that they're going to kind of send me out thinking, eh, it's another like cheap movie. But it would turn around like when he's uh, basically the very first scene, parents get shot. We've all seen it. Big spoiler, Justin, right? Justin yeah. called it a couple episodes ago, right? He sure did. <laughs> so it starts off that way, kills whatever. Bruce falls into the uh, cave or whatever. In this scenario, the bats pull him out of the cave. Like pull- They just spin around circles around him and lift him out. I think that was a dream sequence. Exactly, yeah. yeah. So at first I was like, this is, oh, this is right. cheese. But right. then he goes, I was dreaming. Well, you yeah. know. <laughs> Just like that. Yeah. Uh, it wasn't Christian Bell. I honestly, in the long run, I really enjoyed the movie, and I would definitely like to see it again. Yeah. I, I You know, I had mixed feelings about it seeing it initially. Uh, you know, I wrote my review and, you know, after going and seeing it a second time, I actually think I enjoyed it first than I did, more than I did the first time. I think the reason being was, you know, I went in looking for things that maybe I didn't catch the first time. To your point, obviously, about how the movie begins and about, 
you know, Justin made the point that, you know, how many more times do we have to see Bruce's parents get killed, right? I will have to say, in my opinion, I think it's done the best in this movie as far as how that actually happens and, like, the story that it tells. You know, and the thing is, is, like, with the movie, I feel like, yes, there's a lot that goes on in the movie. And, yes, during the middle part of the movie, I feel like it the pacing feels a little bit off, but I don't think that was any one person's fault in the movie as far as the actor and things like that. I, In my opinion, I think probably what happened is they realized that there was going to be a Justice League movie and they had to find ways that they could fit, you know, tie-ins to that movie, so therefore they were forced to put some extra things in. Do I think that they probably could have left Doomsday out of it and it's still been a good movie? Absolutely, I do. Then again, to me, I felt like Ben Affleck was the best part about that movie is yeah surprisingly <laughs> so i mean he he killed it and i would love to see just a solo batman film yeah i i think so too i think he did a fantastic job uh and, and one of the things that i i wanted to call out in my review and the reason i kind of feel that way is that i feel like and it's just my opinion that bruce wayne and batman you know they're the same person but they're the way they're portrayed is two very different ways and I feel like Ben Affleck is the first one to really do a good job at both you know roles as well so yeah I would definitely agree yeah so do you have anything else to add I don't think so I think that's pretty much it I was gonna say according to Ben Affleck's IMDb page it looks like they're actually gonna make a uh, a Batman standalone film with just him well that's if that's true that's the best news I've heard all day uh, I says, go ahead I'm oh, sorry it says he's actually writing and directing it also oh that would probably be fantastic because he was very good at directing yeah, he's amazing yeah um I would be concerned about who the villain would be, though. Yeah, there's just no other information except yeah. that. The Riddler would be cool if they did him right. Oh, my gosh. You yes. know, they could really do it right and, and not the Jim Carrey one. Well, it, all, it also lists him <laughs> as yeah. Yeah, it also lists him as being in Suicide Squad, maybe pull some people from that well, movie. And that's one of the things, and, and I'm sure you picked up on this even before the movie came out, but there was a lot of talk that in one of the scenes specifically, they have the Riddler's question mark, and a lot of people thought maybe that was you know, kind of either a nod or a hint of a potential villain in the future. Um, and then I'm also curious of how they tie in, um, you know, Robin, because obviously you see his suit in the movie and you see, you know, the stuff that's wrote on the front of it. You know, a lot of people are anticipating that that might be Jason Todd as Joker, possibly, and he may be the Joker that is actually in Suicide Squad. So I'm curious to see if if that actually ends up being the case. Yeah, I, and it's it's interesting because these movies and the Marvel ones do the same thing, where they pull a lot from the comics and that universe, but then they have to change things up just a bit to really keep people interested. Because if you already know what's going to happen, that's not exciting, at least to me. Of course, some people are like, it's not like the book, and right. they whine about it. But you know what? It shouldn't be like the book because it's a different experience. But uh or the comics in this scenario. In the credits, actually, if you remember the guy that was supposed to have worked with the FBI or CIA with um, Lois at the beginning, they were in the right. desert, and they he's like, she had nothing to do with it, and he's got his hands behind his head, and they shoot him. Yeah, uh, James Olsen was the character name. Oh, so I Jimmy Olsen. Yeah. So they kind of like threw him in there, but oh, took him yeah. right out. <laughs> yeah, that's pretty interesting. Yeah, yeah but, I didn't even catch that. Yeah, I guess it was just kind of like a this tiny little Easter egg, you know. And the question mark could be that way with the Riddler. It right. might just be like a visual Easter egg. Yeah, do you feel like this is my last question for you? Because I kind of felt this way that, like, I, I was very back and forth about Wonder Woman. But when they introduced her and she actually started, like, you know, fighting and, like, I was completely sold on her as a character like i thought oh she's pretty awesome yeah honestly the the again with the previews that along with the fact that they had the one preview that showed doomsday i i really wish that they wouldn't have right either of those characters honestly right. because people are going to go see the movie because it's batman versus superman that's what people have been wanting for 30 years you know what i mean but yeah as far as the doomsday thing i probably would have been like super stoked as soon as it would have happened in the movie rather than knowing ahead of time that he's in there. Yeah. And I completely agree. They actually did. Um, after the first trailer came out where they revealed wonder woman and doomsday, a fan actually went back and re-edited the same trailer, leaving them out. And it was, it felt like a totally different movie at that point. Cause you know, if that should have been the trailer that was released in my opinion. Yeah. So. It's just giving away every damn thing they could possibly do. Just imagine going back and look at, some of the movies that we've all known, like the Star Wars, the original trilogy, and thinking, what if these different scenes were given away, like I'm your father and all that stuff? Like, people would have been less excited. Spoiler alert. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> like, 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 think about how different 
the movie Titanic would have been if all you thought it was was a vacation of a family, and and then you went into it thinking that, and then it ends up this Gosh. the boat sinks. <laughs> yeah, you would have my, been completely surprised. My uh, one of my good friends, Brandon. Uh, I assume he still does it, but for the longest time, he would not watch previews. And if we went to see a movie, he would actually like do everything, close his eyes, plug his ears. He did not want to see the previews of big movies that were coming out. Like uh, This is back when like Christian Bell Batman movies oh, were okay. coming. And for him, it kind of changed the experience. Nothing was ruined. He just went into it going, you know, this is probably going to be a movie I like. And, yeah. you know, nothing spoiled. I think that's good. That's a good idea. All right, so uh, changing gears, uh, we're going to go from movies back into games. Uh, Maxwell, do you want to talk a little bit about Doom 4 and multiplayer and such? Uh, yeah, I didn't really look into the multiplayer part. I probably should have done that. However, <laughs> I just recently got uh, wind of it, I guess. It comes out in May. I forgot the date. May something. Something teenth. The something, point being... Something teenth. It looks absolutely phenomenal. And if you were a Doomsday... Doomsday, Yeah. Let's we got back into Batman. If we, if you were a huge Doom fan, uh, growing up playing it on a computer, or whatever, those games they just made a statement in the gaming world. In my opinion, there was nothing like them, and they, you could still go back to this day. I can anyway, and play those computer ones and just really enjoy it. It was a very different type of uh, atmosphere. Okay, this just in from the back office. May thirteenth, Doom Four comes out. For me, the like, visually. I you know it, it has to hold up to its old ways I suppose, but there's you know some jetpack it looked like like a jet boost jump that a lot of future games are having, but the big thing the big takeaway from this is they they threw in all of your classic weapons like the chainsaw shotguns and such and the creatures that were coming into it uh, visually looked a lot like the ones from the older games just obviously enhanced detail, the environments are very stunning, um, but it's a very very gruesome game um much like how uncharted 4 has been saying that they're going to have um like his movements like climbing up a rock or something is going to be different they, they did so many different animations so it's not just very re repetitious like visually this game definitely does that but just with the fact that you're blowing parts off or killing the creatures um i'll never forget it's burning in my brain now it's disgusting but he gets the chainsaw and he's going through and like cutting through the creatures. They're putting their arms up to block the chainsaw. And then he just cuts right through it. It splits through their bodies and their bodies like spread apart. But each time he's killing them with a chainsaw, it's like a different visual like reaction or whatever. He cuts them different, chops them up different, shoots them different. So it's kind of like, uh, I guess as gruesome as some of the Mortal Kombat games are visually. Um, but there, you don't feel the redundancy. Well, that's good. Because uh, I think with a game like that, where you're killing loads of enemies, you don't want the same animations every single time. So, because I think that kind of takes you out of the experience. Mm -hmm. I agree. Doom itself is something I'm really excited for. Like I remember when I think it was Doom Three came out on. Well, obviously it came out on PC, but I also think it came out on Xbox. Either one Xbox, either the original or 360. I can't remember, but but. Uh, I remember playing that game and it was dark and creepy and you know and I even remember going back and playing like you said like the old ones uh the old ones on computer where in the bottom right corner you just seen the guy's face and as you you know your health was going down your guy just started yeah. to look just you know totally beaten up and I remember just you know it, it to me it it reminds me of uh, a more demonic version of Wolfenstein yeah if that's very fair of, yeah yeah of those games as well and i know that i don't really know a ton about multiplayer but i do know that the multiplayer uh if you owned uh if you bought the castle wolfenstein game on ps4 or xbox 1 you got early access to the doom multiplayer uh, which that game came out forever ago. So whether or not you still have held on to that or not, you know, uh, the multiplayer has just opened up. So I think it'll be interesting. Another thing I'm not real sure about that uh, would be fun if they had was if it had co-op. I think that would be kind of cool. Uh, yeah, the the 18 minute video that I only watched like the first half of uh, mentioned that it was co-op multiplayer and then the single oh, that's player. That's pretty. So. That that'll be sweet. Yeah, I agree. That's. Uh, that those are the games that I enjoy. I honestly don't care. There's with single player games other than like Super Metroid uh, and then Mass Effect, which we can get into later. But um, most of the time, I I do not play the story mode. So like Battlefield, whatever. If the game is really centered around an online experience, that's where it's fun for me. And playing with 
people I know, not so much like strangers. So back when Resident Evil 5 came out, you and I sat there and we played that through that game probably three times, oh, yeah. start to finish. So good. And it's just that experience, I guess, is uh, what makes a game for me. I agree. Have you heard anything about, because uh, I know Maxwell and I are really, really excited about it. Have you heard anything about Mighty Number no. 9? Or is... It got delayed, didn't it? <laughs> like like I... 17 times, probably. <laughs> Yeah. Um, yeah. So when that game got announced, uh, I don't remember, like 2013 or something, it got announced and it was a Kickstarter program by the guy that did one of the Mega Man games. I think Mega Man 9 and a couple others or something. Um, however, that ended up getting backed so much by um, Kickstarter, it reached 400% of its campaign or goal, whatever. Yeah. And they start added in, they added in stretch goals too. Like if they, right. You know, continue to raise more money, he would add more content to the point where I think they raised everything that they needed. Right. Yeah, so. exactly. They, it started out for like one console and then it eventually got brought out to the others, uh, or just not brought out to any of them. Cause it's still delayed. Uh, I guess they had a lot of software bug issues and that's what stopped it. It was supposed to come out in March, wasn't it? Yeah. Originally it was supposed to be, uh, originally it was supposed to be, I think March. And then, uh, and of course, you know, it, it's just gotten pushed back so many times. Like to say that I'm still excited about it is an understatement because I am, but I just feel like the more and more it gets pushed back, the more and more, like until you brought it up that you want to talk about on the show, it had already completely left my mind. Yeah. That. And then, um, oh my gosh, it was the, the guardian, uh, <laughs> the last guardian. Last guardian. The, oh my God. I'm Uncharted four is about to be on the I'm list still, too. Uh, Huh? Uncharted 4 it keeps getting pushed back. Oh, yeah. I'm still holding out for Last Guardian E3. Oh, my gosh. It looks so good. Yeah. But, uh, but yeah, I mean, Mighty Number no. 9, like, Maxwell, I know you and I have played countless hours of Mega Man and, you know, just died and died and died and mm-hmm. cheated and died and cheated. And a lot of cheating, but... <laughs> We also wanted to unlock every single thing we could get, you know, all the because we were playing X uh, and X two, yeah. And there's just a lot of hidden content, and apparently, I never knew until you know I played it all the time as a kid, but did not know that in either of those games they had like nods to Street Fighter. It was another Capcom game. They had what was it, the Hadouken in the X, and then in X two they did the up top of the Oaken. Eh, no, that's not it. <laughs> the hard Oaken. There we go. That's the the uppercut was. one. Yeah. Um, the dragon punch, I guess that Ken did. And when you unlock that, it's basically after all of the uh, stage bosses have been beat, and then you go through like the final stages. But those are one hit kills. Yeah. For even the boss is. Do you cool. think in X three that they have Sonic Boom? <laughs> they better. Or maybe uh, you'll go fire. <laughs> I think oh, that'd yeah, be good. that's a good one. <laughs> so, uh, so yeah, Justin, do you want to talk a little bit about Oculus? No, but I will. Yeah, I, I mean, I don't really, I don't know much about it. So you and Maxwell are gonna have to carry this yeah, conversation. Um, so uh, a couple things. I, you know, we mentioned earlier in the episode uh, that it released. It came out to the first round of people who uh, bought into it. It's, it's. I think now, if you try to order, I think it's pushed back to July. Uh, but then, uh, more importantly, a month ago. For test episode zero, I said I was not excited about VR. I think it was gimmicky. I felt like it was stupid. Uh, to an extent, I still feel that way. I I still think PSVR is going to be just a big old poop. Like it just looks <laughs> big old poop. a big old poop. I it just does not look. I don't know if it's the hardware, but I think the games look bad. You know, but like we said, E3 happens between that, between now and then. But forget about PS PSVR because Oculus Rift came out. And the reviews for it have been amazing. Uh, I think IGN gave it a 9 out of 10. Um, it looks like it works really well. It doesn't look to be like there's many, uh, I, you know, I don't think there's much wrong with it. Or would you like to change? Uh, you know, like I mean, to? with the Oculus Rift, I guess a lot of the news right now about it is like their privacy policy and the terms of service. Yeah. Uh, so here, you're paying 600 bucks to get this thing first yeah. off. That's a lot of money. That is a lot of money. It's and you after have to have a put PC. A, yeah. yeah. After they said it wouldn't cost six hundred dollars, yeah. they then charge six hundred dollars. Um. So the big things, I guess, right now is that at it, well, it's owned by the Mark Zuckerberg, I guess, or Facebook yeah. owns it, which of course is just not good uh, if you care about privacy. So that thing's just basically going to oh, suck in as much information from you. I'm sure if it's got a microphone in it, it's going to suck that in and everything you're talking about. It knows your location, your uh, IP address. I mean, 
what else? It's going to get basically... Are you, are you a conspiracy theorist? Uh, I mean, with Facebook, yeah. Because, look, if you Be- have the Facebook app and you use the your phone at all, if you've ever talked out loud around your phone... I don't talk out loud. Be honest. Be honest. <laughs> Do you know where Edward Snowden is? Uh, we can't that's a, we can't talk about that. Okay. But the problem is, with like, Facebook, they, they pull in... The things that you're talking about, the apps will do it. It happened to you me. You did a test, as, right? I mean, yeah. Why don't so, you tell everyone about that? I'm going to tell everyone about that you, if you guys are ready. This is why I don't have the app on my phone. Um, I was working one day, and another employee and I were talking about something that had never been discussed before. I've never searched for it on the internet. And sure enough, 30 minutes later, I'm scrolling through Facebook, and there's an advertisement for the thing that we were talking about. It happened to him. He was talking about a local restaurant through text messaging with his father that he's never been to because he's not a big seafood guy. And 20 minutes later, he's scrolling through Facebook and there's an advertisement for the local eatery. So like what? Yeah. You can't, I mean, you're, blow, anyway, you're blowing my mind. Yeah. Here. So imagine that with the big poop that you said <laughs> stuck to your head. <laughs> no, I call it PSVR. Oh, poop, okay. Yeah. Well, Oculus script is just an invasive poop. Apparently. I gotcha. Yeah. So the, the issue is that they're going to be pulling all this stuff in this content uh, your GPS, your location. So it's just more advertisement for Facebook. So they're just going to be making, honestly, a ton of money off of you looking around the $600 product. Some of the bad parts is that they won't back that thing at all. So if for some reason your content, your information that you've used with that, so if you're like using a credit card to purchase a game or whatever, uh, if it gets hacked, any of that information gets pulled out, they're not liable whatsoever. Um, and then at any reason, they could just shut down your system and like basically end your use of it. And you have a $600 paperweight. But it would look cool. That's, yeah. Weighing that's, down that well, paper. Well, remember the virtual boy. Yes. I still use it to weigh down paper. Oh, I thought you meant you still use the virtual boy. No, yeah, I, I use it as a paperweight. You today. play Mario Tennis till your eyes bleed. <laughs> really, they, they bleed. Um, yeah. I, yeah. I mean, you, you brought up some, some real concerns. I just don't care. Uh, no, no, I'm kidding. Um, I I do think that um, no, I do care, uh, but I, I feel like uh, my my point. What I think it just it's exceeding the expectations I had set for it. But the information that you've brought to the table today uh, does it makes it you know when if I ever do decide to purchase one, it will make me. It's not a matter of if; it's a matter of when. Oh God, Travis. Let's, uh, let's be honest. Yeah, I mean you're probably right, but. I mean, when when I decide to purchase it, well, I mean that's not necessarily true, but it's most likely true. <laughs> but uh, I mean, it just the I don't know. It just it seems for the most part solid. There's not a lot I out for that I would want to play right now. Uh, that's why I'm really excited about E3 this year. I think you know it'll give Oculus a chance to build on, upon itself with you know better games, and I think it will give the PSVR a chance to climb out of the toilet and evolve from a turd maybe into a uh, diamond or something. <laughs> um, do you have anything else to say on that? I was just gonna say uh, there's rumors also that the PlayStation VR, or as you better call it, a turd. <laughs> Uh, they also may make it compatible with the work with the PC as well. That would be cool because then maybe it could play with games that don't suck. The thing is, is <laughs> yeah, you're right. Never mind. <laughs> I mean, I just don't want to play Robot Monster Golf or whatever. Have you it looked was. into these games since you watched that release? But no, I've, well, no then need. You, no then maybe need. you just don't know. Maybe, and I I don't think much has been added to it since then. But I do think, and I I really think that at E3, my mind will probably change. I think they're probably going to come out. Uncharted VR, maybe uh, The Last of Us VR. I think basically anything that Sony has made that's been profitable and successful will get VR treatment. I think they're gonna make a rail, like kind of like a rail system for uh, Until Dawn. You know what that sounds like? What a toilet flushing. Oh, <laughs> it just that just doesn't. <laughs> that's... Until Dawn was such a great game that didn't need. VR or the on rails treatment, and I just kind of feel like they're taking the Until Dawn name. So you don't you don't think if Until Dawn, not this rail system thing, but you don't think Until Dawn would have been more immersive if it was a VR experience? I mean, yeah, oh, it definitely would have been, but turning it into an on rails game and putting it in VR 
doesn't Different, really yeah. it doesn't really appeal to me. I agree. Okay, well, fantastic. Now, moving on, there's something that uh, I know you and Maxwell are both going to be excited to talk about, right? Uh, and that's Mass Effect, right? Before we get into Mass Effect, because uh, this is just in. Uh-oh. Oh, what? Groundbreaking. Uh, everybody that's listening, get your phone. Go oh. to Zelda 30. That's Zelda 30 tribute.com and prepare to have your mind blown by a 3D remastered but very 8-bit looking at the same time re-release I guess I don't know is that official I don't know anything or? it just went here and you start it off like as soon as you get in there it's like a start menu and everything uh, I'm not gonna tell you too much about it but go there and have a good time well, alright have... guys we're wrapping up the podcast so we can play Legend of Zelda <laughs> on our phones we'll no. put the we'll put the link in the call notes as well definitely um, we're not really wrapping up the podcast yeah sorry to interrupt keep that listening was probably worth it Oh, so, was, uh, what were you saying, Travis? I was going to say, so I know that you and Maxwell are really big Mass Effect fans. Yes. I have to be honest, I haven't really played 1 through 3 much at all. I would like to see them eventually re-released so I could, can play them, because I don't want to buy an old console to do so. But what do you guys think? Real quick, I want to ask you, Maxwell, did you like Mass Effect 1? I loved all of them. <laughs> I, I think it's because I made the mistake of not playing 1 when it came out, and I played two first oh like, yeah you ruined it and two is it's so, so much, much better, better. Yes. yes they fixed all the crap like yeah the... i mean i've gone back and played one since don't get me wrong but it's just uh two is so good yeah no i mean is it such uh they just fixed a lot of like the stuff that just took too yeah. long for like mining all the stuff but yeah. it's interesting that you like this game so much considering you just talked about not liking these types of games no, 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 no. <laughs> this is, uh, no, I enjoy any, that's the thing, I don't think Doom has a really good story. I don't know. It Effect might. Has. It might have the worst story of all, but yeah, who cares? It probably does. But, Mass <laughs> but Effect, it's got a BFG. Yeah, that's Ma- right. Mass Effect has a very engrossing story that just really grabs you from the beginning. Right, yeah. yes. It's uh, the best. And it's, they've gotten better and better with yeah. how the stories go. It might be, I mean, this is obviously my opinion, it might be the best storytelling game I've played. Yeah, I would agree with that. Yeah, I mean, it's just, from beginning to end, it's just even the third one. Uh, people hated the ending. I still found a way to like it. So, yeah, I mean, it's kind of like whenever you end a series of a TV show, nobody is really ever satisfied with the ending of yeah. it. Except I was, for Breaking Bad, that was fantastic. I wouldn't know. I, I don't know anything about what? it. What? Yeah. Oh my god. No, okay, it was sorry. so. It was way too late. It's kind of like Lost. I got so, into it way too late that it. I don't know. Oh Same god. with Dexter. I don't know. Uh, but not yeah. a lot of people were happy with Lost ending, right? Uh, I found a way to be happy with okay. it. Okay. Yeah. But that's just kind of like the Jerry Seinfeld was talking about it on uh, one of his shows uh, about nothing. And he specifically said, you know, there were a lot of upset people back then, but how do you really control that without upsetting somebody? Because everybody's pretty much already got their idea of how it should end or how they would want it to end. And then you release it and then you're always going to have somebody that's upset. Yeah, that's true. This actually, since we're talking about endings, let's jump from Mass Effect for a moment and jump into something else you wanted to talk about, Travis. Does that have to do with Uncharted 4? Yeah, we'll come back to Mass Effect in a minute, but we got on to endings and I think we need to jump to this real quick. Yeah, so there's a lot of articles out that the ending for Uncharted 4 fans are not going to be a big fan of. They didn't release what it was, but there's a lot of speculation saying that like fans that's been a fan of the series for a really long time may not be happy with the ending. Now, I don't know if that's because Drake, the main character, dies or what may happen, but I know that there's a lot of speculation around the ending and that, you know, the director said that, you know, they may not like the ending. So, so it's kind of like what, you know, Maxwell was just saying, you know, I mean, people will love it and people will hate it. Right. It's going to be, and this is the end of the series, right? I mean, the series is, we know it. Yes. I mean, they may eventually do a spinoff with another character, yeah. but yeah, I mean, I think it, this is going to be the end of Drake's story, whether he lives or dies. Yeah, he's going to die. <laughs> Which I mean, probably, and it's kind of, you know, there's several movies out there where the main character dies and, you know, people don't like that. Yeah. But, you know, you have to learn to deal with it because sometimes that's what makes those movies so much better is yeah. that it gives a different ending. It's not a happy ending. Right. And sometimes not I'll... to be confused with a happy ending. Yeah. Yeah. I also think that uh... <laughs> also... the TV show happy ending. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, sure. Ex- that's sounds exactly good. right. <laughs> Keep this clean. No. Yeah. I also think, though, that uh, sometimes that's good, though, because it shows that the story is bigger than one character. Right. So yep. I think sometimes to, to tell a better story, it may take, you know, ending a character's life to, you know, to propel the story forward. So here's our useless trivia for the evening because you brought up Lost. Um, Michael Keaton was supposed to play Jack in the pilot and he was supposed to die in the first episode. No way. 
Yeah, no. What? Yeah, you didn't know that, Travis? No. Yeah, originally Michael Keaton was cast, and he was going to die in the first episode, and Kate was going to lead the show. And then basically they said, this is horrible. Let's bring in Matthew Fox and just ride him out to the end. Well, what's weird is that I don't think Michael Keaton could have died because he's Batman. <laughs> 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 and we're full and Birdman. I mean, and yeah, <laughs> and Beetlejuice. Yeah, so regardless, he's yeah. So if he dies, he just becomes Beetlejuice, I guess. Yeah. You just, we just said his name three times, did we not? Oh God! Oh no! <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay. Let's get back to Mass Effect. Yeah. Um, so so le- leaked images, right? Uh, footage or footage? Yeah, uh, there was some footage last week. A lot of people thought it was an April Fool's prank. It might have been. I mean, some some That's jerk fine. could have made it on the internet. <laughs> and said, this is it. Hey, good job, you. jerk. He did a vi- visually pleasing. Yeah, it looks spoof. It looked good. I mean, we got glimpses of our main character, what I assume, uh, in a jetpack. Yeah. And what else was there? I can't remember. That's all I remember. That's all you remember. the jetpack. That's all you need to remember. I just, I mean, yeah. This clip was just literally like five seconds, mm-hmm. and the entire Mass Effect fandom went nuts. And rightfully so, because this game's probably going to be the best game. The, yeah, you know what I want out of this? Because it kind of ties back what I was talking to you, Travis. Uh, I want it to be a great multiplayer. Because the last one was really just crap. The multiplayer did not enjoy. You, in the for Mass Effect 3, you basically had to play the multiplayer to get enough, like, I don't know what it was called. It was some sort of points to get, like, the best ending. Did you Yeah. Do that? I think so. I painfully I s- went through that just to make sure. I mean, I the with games game. like that and like Final Fantasy games, older ones more so than new ones, I spend so much time finding all the crap. Like I'm a searcher, like yeah. in these games, I got to get everything, got to get all the points and all the points, all the points. <laughs> well, um, in the Mass Effect games, because you'll have to educate me because I haven't played them. Do you mostly find yourself in a party of three at all times, or is there ever a point where you're playing through by yourself? Yeah, I mean, it's a mix. So it just depends on how the storyline goes. And then sometimes it's actually part of your choice, whether you go this route or that route, or who you have to split up. Do you take this person with you or that one? Yeah. Um, But generally, most missions, it's you plus two. In Mass Effect 2, that ending was so... uh, It was insane, because you had like your team of, I don't know, like nine people or something like that. And each one has like a specialty, and basically you're going on this suicide run. And you had to assign certain people to certain tasks so. or else people were going to die. And there was no way to nope. really know who to assign without cheating. So if you assign them to the wrong <laughs> tasks, they're going to die. Yeah, like maybe like if you assign someone who's not so good at this, you know, you put them to guard, you yeah. know, he's going to die. But if you assign someone who's better at defending or whatever, then... I bet you Maxwell probably didn't oh, let a single character die. man. Down. Well, you know, I wouldn't have. I had someone's face melt off. The mine. game, uh, apparently there was like a known issue and i i guess they patched it later but it wouldn't fix the issue unless you started previously yeah. from getting but jack the character the yeah. girl there was a point where if you did something out of this, a specific order which it normally wouldn't matter that's part of the fun of the game as you can go any order it would always gray out the opportunity to like to do the paragon with her to get her yeah. to gain her to my to side trust, yeah. so i never had her trust so she died she was the only one so though, you didn't get to revisit was, her in uh three no which sucked and it's just like it made me so angry that like that glitch just ruined it and like i love the game so much but i i spend so much time finding all these little things i was not going to go back and start it all over when do you think we're going to play this game as soon as it comes out <laughs> yeah <laughs> Not it's this it. year. You don't think it'll be the, I think yeah, I think it has been pushed into twenty seventeen, right? It'll be twenty seventeen. I mean anymore, March twenty seventeen, I'm calling it right now. I, I, whatever. Before it's pushed <laughs> it's gonna back. get pushed back again just yeah. like mighty Yeah. Um, twelve. If the footage yeah. was real and even if it wasn't real, I, I think we're gonna get something at E three. I mean we have to. Right? Yeah. I, they're I mean, pretty big at doing that. I didn't think. they didn't they show a teaser at last E three? Yeah, it was just a yeah, silhouette so, or something yeah, it wasn't anything big yeah i mean yeah i mean they could have a big presence at e3 i know that take two is supposed to have a huge presence uh this year at e3 so it'll be interesting to see who who is going to you know show up to show up with uh big big games and big guns and we just did that i love, uh, it. I love it yeah that's right <laughs> So uh, are you guys done talking about Mass Effect? I'm never or? done talking about Mass Effect. 
<laughs> but moving on, we're going to talk about uh, what games are free this month with Games for Gold and also PlayStation Plus. So, uh, But for PlayStation uh, 4 this month, we have Dead Star, which is a online space shooter combining fast-paced feel of an arcade classic with modern RPG elements. That sounds like a game that's right up our alley, Maxwell. Oh, yeah. It's so a, like a like a Gradius or like the top-down style? It's, it's a top-down. I think it's actually a combination of both, judging from the screenshots that I'm looking at. But that's free this month. And then for those of you that remember when a zombie game came out on Wii U called Zombie U, they actually released a version for uh, Xbox One and PS4 just called Zombie. Same creator. Yeah, I think it's pretty much just a port that they may have you know, cleaned up a little bit. That's also free this month. For Xbox One, uh, some pretty good releases. So uh, the first season of The Wolf Among Us, which I know we talked about that maybe either our first episode or second episode. It was last time. Yeah. Uh, we that, talked about the Telltale Games treatment. Right, yeah. yeah. So April 1st through the 15th, The Wolf Among Us will be free on Xbox One. And then the second half of the month, the 15th through the 30th of April, Sunset Overdrive is actually a that's, free title. That's which, a big one. Which I never played it. It kind of reminded me of Jet Set Radio, uh, you know, mixed with shoot 'em up stuff and crazy taxi style. I don't know. Did you play it, Justin? I did. Before it came out, I was really excited about it. I thought it looked great. Uh, when it came out, I kind of felt let, let down. I didn't really put a lot into it, but I am excited about picking it up again. Let's let me guess. See. You thought it was a turd. No, it was... Uh, <laughs> Everything's a turd, Justin. No, no, not everything. Just PSVR. Yeah, and then, <laughs> and then uh, Nintendo actually released their first app in the App Store, uh, as far as first game app, called Mitomo. Is that right, Maxwell? Uh, yeah, Mitomo. Yeah, Tomo. And, what, and what's that mean in Japanese? Well, Tomo Dachi's friend, Satomo. Ah, I guess. And so then, me friends. <laughs> well, the me, right? The me characters. Yeah, yeah, me characters from the the Wii and Wii U. And basically, it's just a game where you make your character, uh, you add people on a friends list, and you basically just have conversations with each other, and your characters will just kind of in- intermingle with each other. I played it a little bit. I got my wife into it, and she seems to be addicted all of a sudden. I don't know what's a, what it's all about, but. Uh, but it's pretty interesting because it'll ask you random questions. Like a fr- like one of your friends will come over and ask you a random question, and you answer it, and then they go back and they report whatever the answer was. So it's a it's a really interesting way to find out answers to questions you wouldn't normally ask friends, which is kind of <laughs> interesting. So that just sounds like it's gonna be bad at some point. It's gotten really good reviews. No, I mean, I mean, like I feel like one of these days I'm gonna visit your Mitomo and it's gonna tell me something about you that I don't want to know. <laughs> oh well. <laughs> If I, I I always have the option to skip answering a question. Okay. But chances are I'll answer it anyway. Okay. So I don't, no I, limits. It's kind of a creepy app. Like I visited a friend on there the other day and he just started rambling on about like spaghetti or something. I don't even remember what it was. It was just weird. I'm like, dude, I don't, I don't care about spaghetti. Yeah, I don't really know what this is. But isn't that all social media? It's yeah. just people talking about <laughs> crap that nobody cares about. Pretty it's, much. It's basically like a video game version of Facebook. That's disgusting. Yeah. That's basically, I know how you feel about Facebook. Yeah, we won't go back into that. Let's go back into it. <laughs> uh, conspiracy <laughs> Yeah, I'll black that stuff out of my head. Yeah, but that's the games that's coming out this week. Justin, you want to talk about uh, early access to a Roller Coaster Tycoon game? Early access is a topic that it's controversial in a way. Developers, they'll release a game that is unfinished, and that's that's a known fact before you buy it. And generally, this game is released at a much lower cost. And, you know, generally... What did we say earlier? Like ten to thirty dollars. Yeah, usually. typically on Steam, it's anywhere from ten to thirty dollars. Most of them fall in the twenty dollar price range. Yeah, and basically it gives you an option to buy in at a lower price while they build the game. It gives the developer funding, and then you know when the game is finished, it's no longer in early access. They you know they raise the price up to a full retail release price, and that's you know if you've already bought in for twenty, you're you're good. You don't need to buy it again. Generally, the system works. You know they've had successful titles like. Day Z. Well, I say successful. I mean that in the sense that they're still being developed and, you know, people play them. You know, like Day Z, Rust, Arc, Kerbal Space Program. Uh, I mean, the list goes on and on. But recently, a game was added to Steam Early Access, uh, Roller Coaster Tycoon World. I don't know if you're a fan of the game. You know, it's been around for probably close to two decades, wouldn't you say? Maybe not that long. That might be a huge... Yeah, I've, I've played the old ones maybe a few times, but I haven't really dove deep yeah. into them. Yeah, well, this game released on Steam Early Access, and you might be thinking, oh, that's that's neat. I can buy in, I can play, and whenever it's released, they'll charge me full price. Uh, they're going to charge you full price now. It is listed at forty nine <laughs> ninety nine on Steam. A deluxe edition 
is fifty nine ninety nine. But it, you know, as Maxwell pointed out to me, if you if you spend fifty and you're really feeling like you want to burn that ten extra dollars, there's an upgrade option. <laughs> so with early access. There's no guarantee that the game is ever going to be finished. I mean, you could pay the fifty dollars, and the next week they could yank it from the store, and that's that. You know, it's it's happened before. The Stomping Land. Um, it was actually kind of they. You know, it was basically what Ark is now, except it was third person. Uh, you know, the dinosaurs and everything, and it just completely went under. And you know, anyone that bought in, I think that was like twenty five dollars. You lost your money. That was that. So, I mean, what do you guys think about early access? Is it a good idea for the consumer? I mean, it, yeah, it gives you a chance to get a game at a much lower price, but there's also a chance that you're throwing that money away. Uh, yeah, I don't know. I mean, that's a good question. Um, I guess it really just depends on the game. If somebody's like that obsessed with playing that series, but if it's a brand new game that's never been mentioned before, I would have no faith in doing that. Yeah, I mean, I've done it a few times. Like I've done it with. With Rust, I've done it with Space Engineers, I've done it with Forgot about Space Engineers. Yeah, it's a great game. That's good. Uh, and that that's now in full release, right? Correct. Yeah. yeah. And, and and to if you can get in early to a game that ends up being successful, then it's awesome because you can get into what would normally sell for fifty or sixty dollars, you can get into for twenty or thirty dollars. Yep. On the flip side of that, if you invest into a game and it ends up not getting enough support and never coming out, then you're out twenty or thirty dollars. Yep. Um you know, one of the things that I think about, you know, it comes to mind is when DayZ used to be a mod for Arma, and then they wanted to make a standalone game. They did the early access, which I did. And when the game actually came out, I didn't find it nearly as good as when it was an actual mod for Arma 3, so then I felt a little burnt, you know, by that. But, you know, I think I think it has its good sides and its bad sides, but I've had mostly positive experiences from doing early access However, charging almost full retail price for early access to me just seems crazy because there's literally no benefit to the consumer at all other than getting to play it a little bit early. I've also done it recently with ARC on Xbox One. Yeah. You know, that's $35 to get in, and when it comes out, it's going to be you know, a $50 or $60 game. So yeah. I, I feel like that's a fair price. Yeah, and with, with Roller Coaster Tycoon World, I mean, I'm looking at the reviews here. It's listed as mostly negative with over a thousand negative reviews and only 500 positive positive. and we all know how people on steam review things it's a lot of them are probably sarcastic reviews <laughs> they're not really positive but you know like you're saying i have had a lot of positive experiences my biggest negative would be um it'd probably be the stomping land i did buy into that one i mean i just threw 25 dollars away pretty much but my most played game on steam is rust and i paid 20 dollars for that game three years ago and i'm still playing it so, so. you've definitely gotten 20 dollars worth for oh sure. god yeah yeah but another thing with rust though is is it still in early access three years later they you know they push out weekly updates but it's still not you know what you would call a complete game so yeah another game that i did it with as well and i know we talked about lost earlier is i did it with a game called forest the forest i think yeah and i think it's i think it's out fully now but that game actually when i bought in i think it was twenty dollars but the game that i played even when it was twenty dollars was actually really good the only problem was is i think i started it when it was an alpha it's and 15 now Oh, is it? Yeah. So every time they would actually do a, a major update, anything that you would have crafted got completely wiped and you'd have to start all over. Yeah. But that's that's part of an alpha, yeah. you know. That's kind of how Rust is, too, is every month they force every server to wipe because they usually uh, they usually update something with the, the way the world is created. Right. And um, they'll add items. <clears throat> they'll add a couple items every week sometimes, but it, usually the wipes only happen every month. Yeah, and I think and I think going into early access, those are things you go in probably knowing by this point that but Forest is still in early access. Is it? Yeah. Okay. But it's uh, only fifteen dollars though, it's not yeah, fifty or it's, sixty. And it's really fun. The crafting system is some of the best that I've seen. Now granted it's probably not in as in depth as maybe Minecraft or Rust, but but I like the way that that the crafting system is done, uh, and I and I like the survival aspect. And it has that whole creepy cannibal thing going on where you're literally on the beach building a cabin and you look you look up into the woods and you see just a just cannibals just looking at you and you think they're going to come attack you but they literally just turn around and walk the opposite direction that's creepy you know what i always think of when i when i think of uh, cannibals what's that you want to take a guess cuz it always seems to tie back to him uh anthony hopkins no ju- <laughs> <laughs> good guess uh judge dread <laughs> <laughs> The original with uh, Stallone. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> That's pretty He goes good. out to the desert. Yeah. So uh, I made a huge goof in this episode. What's that? Uh, I mentioned new releases earlier. And, uh, you know, we talked about VR also. 
a brand new game on Steam this week, uh, Job Simulator. It's also <laughs> compatible is with it, VR. Is it a Steve Jobs? You simulate Steve Jobs? Yes, yes. No, uh, it's literally you go to work every day. <laughs> yeah, you play a game that makes you so, go to work in <laughs> VR. So when I'm not working, I can also work. It honestly kind of looks like you don't work in this game either. Like he looks like he threw all the food out of the refrigerator. At one point, he was throwing a paper airplane. It looks kind of like that surgeon simulator. It does, game, but it, you have jobs. Yeah, you have jobs. How's that? How's that game reviewed on Steam? <laughs> Positive. With only five reviews. Uh, Unlike the adult version of Jobs. One of VR. the be- here's the yeah, review. One of right. the best game game not games for VR and HTC Vive. Incredible fun. Well, that's <laughs> where else could you sell one hot dog for three thousand four hundred and fifty dollars and get a thank you from a customer? Well, I'm gonna quit my job and get this game. <laughs> I can. That's what I was gonna say. I find this game is probably really awesome for people that don't have real jobs. Okay, real quick, this one review really, really makes me laugh. So, whenever an Xbox comes out or a PS4, they usually have you know big launch titles, right? Uh, this game is this person reviewed this game as being one of the flagship games for the Vive. So <laughs> they, uh, open up that checkbook if you still use checks, and uh, let's uh, let's pick up this game. <laughs> yeah. So. Oh, and you, you want to hear how much this game cost? How much? You, guess. Uh, I want to guess forty. Yeah, you were right. Yeah. So, uh, <laughs> to me, when I think Job Simulator, I think that's a forty dollar game because <laughs> I know how much I really love it in real life. Oh, wait. Oh, good news. Good news. Oh, no, wait. Yeah, you have to have VR to play. So oh. don't don't buy it just yet, guys. Get your VR first. I guess I'll just strap my computer monitor to my head. <laughs> See how that works out. You'll get pink eye that way. Oh, well, I thought that was only if you farted on someone's pillow. <laughs> well, well, we called VR turd early. A turd oh, early, okay. So. Fair okay. enough. <laughs> Fair okay. enough. But yeah, back to your original point so we don't get too off topic yeah. here. That uh, I'm already off topic. Yeah, that early access, I think is a good thing and a bad thing depending on what game you decide to back. I think if you possibly do more research on the game before actually deciding to back it by reading reviews or doing research, I don't think that's a bad thing because yeah. typically you're quick to tell you if a game is terrible, yeah. right? So I think as long as you do your research before you decide to throw 20 or $30 down, uh, I think you'd be fine. But I would not play pay anywhere close to a full retail cost of a game just to get early access. No, I wouldn't either unless like EA were to come out and say, well, we're going to release Mass Effect in early (laughs) access. And then I'd be like, okay, sure, here's my money. If you know it's going to go towards the full game when it comes out, yeah, probably. Yeah. If it's a game that big and you can trust is not going to be terrible. I'm afraid we're going to see major studios start to do this, release games in early access. I mean, I I look at it more as like an up-and-coming studio with you know not a lot of room or money to work with. Right, getting their product out there, and it's a great system when it works. But if like EA, I swear to God, if they try to like release a game early access, no, finish the job and release it because you know, you're capable of doing that. You know what I'm really surprised about is that um, I'm really surprised that uh, the game. Oh God, it's it just totally left me. Uh, the hello, the the game that's by the company Hello Games, No Man's Sky. Yeah, No Man's Sky. Like. I, I'm really surprised that hasn't had any as big as that game is going to be, and yeah. and how big of an undertaking that game is. I'm really surprised that there's not some sort of early access fee, or I don't even recall them saying there was any sort of closed beta in that game. Yeah. Like it's been kept under lock and key. I mean, even IGN themselves only got to spend about 30 minutes actually playing the game, and everything else that they were just watching the you know developer guy play it. So yeah, I mean that's one if. It, I don't know. I don't know how they funded their game, but it's one that if they probably wouldn't have secured that funding, it would have been an early access title. Yeah, I I agree. But I'm I'm pretty excited for that game to come out. So, what else you got, Justin? Anything else about early access? Uh, no, that's pretty much all I want to say about it. <laughs> that's all I got to say about <laughs> that's that. That's all. I, that's all I want to say about yeah. it. I, I've made my piece. Yeah. Now, one of the things that I wanted to mention was two big updates actually coming out on the exact same day, April twelfth. Wait a minute, Travis. You're not going to talk about what I think you're going to talk about, are you? You mean Destiny? No! <laughs> and The Division. Okay, I'm okay with that one. Yeah. Um, but For now. Yeah, what's funny is both these games are having, well, this will be The Division's first major update since the game's launch. Uh, and this will be one of Destiny's big updates. Uh, it's not going to be a standalone expansion, obviously, but it's going to be one of the big updates that overhauls the game. And my question is to you two is that, and I, and I'll get in depth about you know what the updates actually entail. But Destiny obviously has been out for how long now? Too long. 
too long, right? Yeah. And they're releasing a huge update that's going to overhaul a lot of things that fans have been talking about for a while. Is it too late? Or do you guys even care about Destiny? If they update this game, are you ever going to go back and play it, or are you just going to throw it in the trash? Mine's already in the trash. Fair enough. No, I, I uninstalled mine uh, months ago. Okay. Yeah, I don't think I'll... Uh, I mean, I have no intentions of revisiting it, I suppose. Um, of course, same could be said with other games like Battlefield, as old as old as it is. But there's just something about Destiny that's just burned me one too many times. But there are fans out there, and we have a very particular friend that will we play it till the day name. it dies. Um which is fine, and for people like her, the big fans, they're probably very welcoming to these changes, which maybe that's what those hardcore fans, maybe that's what keeps them involved. But I know the last time they did that change, uh, last year, it revamped so much stuff, and it basically made so many pieces of equipment useless, and you know, it, it took away all the work that all these people invested in the game and then just made it all like basically zeros, right. and you had to kind of start fresh, which you know, maybe that's the good thing about it. It is, and I know a lot of times, like people that spend tons and tons and tons of time, like like you said, grinding to get certain gear, certain weapons, and then an update comes out, and then somebody that's been playing the game for a total of ten minutes got what you've been spending hours and hours on. Sometimes is very disheartening. On April twelfth, the patch is going to be two point two, and some of the big highlights that are coming, obviously, are new challenges. Um, you know, in the Prison of Elders. Uh, there's also going to be uh, new strikes added, uh, Blighted Chalice uh, Strike and Winter's Run Strike. There's also going to be, obviously, new rewards. They're also taking the the max light level from 320 up to 335. One of the other things that they're going to do is they're releasing new armor sets. The, in, uh, the infusion system uh, is changing, and that's one of the things I'm kind of excited about if I actually ever go back and play it. Because infusing, if you take like a weapon that's a higher level, say if you have a shotgun that's level... 310 but you got a drop for a weapon that's 320 you can infuse it into the lower into the lower level weapon and actually will raise the light level of that weapon the problem was when you took a really high level weapon and you infused it into a lower level weapon it would only give you so many points now as an example like if you take a 320 item and you infuse it into a 310 item it will take that weapon and raise it up to a 320 which is something that i think they should have done from the beginning but that's something that they're also doing as well uh, one of the things I'm sure a lot of hardcore fans are going to be excited about is they're bringing Gear 1 gear upgraded. So there's some Gear 1 weapon stuff and gear that I have that you can't use in any of the expansion because it's all Year 1 stuff. So they're bringing a lot of that back and a lot of the exotic weapons they're bringing back. And, of course, just the little things like new emotes and a new HUD system that's completely optional. So it's a pretty big update, but back to my original point, is it too little, too late for people that aren't hardcore fans? Are they going to want to go back and play it? I know a lot of people at work have been talking about going back and at least trying it out. So, But I just thought this was really interesting that this update comes out on April 12th, and also the Division update comes out on the exact same day. Now, nobody's came out and said this was intentional. Nobody said that, oh, it just so happens to be the same day. But, it's, but if you think about both types of games, they're very multiplayer driven, right? And they're very RPG element-esque. I would have a hard time believing that it wasn't done intentionally by, you know, Ubisoft, you know, because they're trying to make, you know, they're they're trying to make a, you know, a stamp of their own in, in this market. So, you know, with the Division update, you know, they're going to introduce the actual missions that allows you to do raids. So you're going to be doing raids, um, I think up to eight player raids, which will be really interesting. Other than that, they're introducing new items, new weapons, and new gear sets. They're also finally adding a looting and trading system, so you'll actually be able to trade weapons between players and gear between players, which is really cool. Uh, and they're also going to do some uh, added Dark Zone supply drops, so they're going to add some stuff to the Dark Zone as well. So, so both these updates are set to be pretty huge updates in their own regard obviously this is just one of the many updates destinies has gotten and this is the first major one since the division's been out so justin are you excited for any of these things other at least for uh at least for the division yeah i'm excited about the division update i'm not gonna lie i've kind of i've kind of uh, neglected that game over the past couple of weeks but uh, i it's not one i've given up on i just you know been doing other things yeah i'm excited about it, it should breathe you know a little bit of life into the game not that it needs it it just you know yeah. It'll be refreshing. It'll be nice. Yeah. Uh, Destiny, no. Yeah. I'm, yeah, I don't know if I'll go back and play Destiny, to, per, 
to be perfectly honest. I mean, I've gotten to the point where I don't need to uninstall it from my system because I have plenty of space, but... I just didn't I, like looking at it. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Made me mad every time. Yeah, so... Um, but The Division, I'm kind of like you in the sense that life just kind of got in the way and I haven't really gotten to to nearly as invest as much time in The Division as I've wanted to, but I'm kind of excited with this new content coming that as I start to you know invest more time in it, there's going to be new content for me to enjoy right away. Yeah. You know, The only bad thing is I think you're kind of in the same boat as I am that uh, our friends have already left us behind because they've gotten to play a ton of it and we have not. So one of the other things that we wanted to touch on uh, moving from the updates of Destiny and Division is uh, Final Fantasy XV. Maxwell, I know that you have... Um, you played a lot of the older Final Fantasy games, like seven and eight, and I think yep. some of the other ones. Are you pretty excited for fifteen? Uh, well, seven, of course, this everybody's favorite. Yeah. Whatever, blah. <laughs> <laughs> love the game, just tired of uh, you know that being the main one. But I loved eight. Uh, nine was okay, and then ten came along, and it slowly fell out of love with the series. Yeah, I will say you had um, this new one on your uh, PlayStation, and I got to play it a little bit. And it pulled me back in. And I think the reason why is that they really got rid of the turn by turn, the which turn is helpful. Based. Yeah. Which is kind of what they were originated from, you know, with the first NES game. But people are kind of falling out of that series. So I think they did a great job because the game is massive. It's gorgeous, too. Oh, my yeah. gosh. The detail, even for like a PS4 game. I mean, you can get a lot out of that, but it, the system is limited, you know, versus a PC. But, yeah, it's an absolutely stunning game. There's so much going on at all times. Uh, you can get lost in that world, which uh, for somebody like me that likes to investigate everything, right? I mean, that's it's kind of bad news. That, that could be like a 80-hour game that I could turn it into like a 300-hour game because I could just look at everything in the game, try to find all the secrets. All the secrets. All, All the yeah. Secrets. What <laughs> what excites me about it is I never really got into a lot of turn based games. Like I never played Final Fantasy seven or eight or ten. Or I tried to play ten, but it was just very hard for me to get past the turn based system. It, I just couldn't get into it. And what excites me about Final Fantasy fifteen is the first RPG s game that I really got into and really enjoyed. And you're probably gonna laugh at me when I say this was. The first RPG that I played that I really, really like, because I don't consider Zelda and games like that to really be RPGs, is the Kingdom Hearts series. Yeah. Uh, Because it was very lighthearted, and it was more like a a hack and slash, and then also being able to cast spells and abilities and summons in real time as opposed to, you know, turn-based. And and to me, the fighting system in this is very similar to how Kingdom Hearts plays. Uh, So I'm really excited about it. But on the flip side of that, and I think... I kind of noticed this when you and I were playing the game is that the fighting system, even though it seems to be hack and slash and casting abilities on the fly, it also seems like it has the ability to be very complex. Cause I know that us just going through the tutorial and being able to link up with other players and, 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 and being able to use moves off of each other was just very in depth. Um, and maybe maybe we'll take some getting used to, but it seems like it's going to be really good. Yeah. And it, it reminds me of some games that are out there that when you, set it down for like a couple months and you pick it back up and you're halfway through the game, you kind of forget all of that and it takes you some time to relearn it. But the game's harder at that point. So you really have to like learn your setup, your equipment and all that stuff faster um, to remember it. Right. Justin, have you played any of the demo at all? Yeah, I, I really enjoyed it. And like Maxwell said, I, you know, seven was great. Eight is my favorite uh, as well. Um, nine just okay like you said and then with 10 and on i kind of start stop playing i mean i would always give them a shot but i never i don't think i finished any of them uh not even close and with this one i'm really excited about it i i you know, i've kind of fallen in love with the series again yeah whenever uh 13 came out i was so pumped for it because it looked so good like yeah. graphics and everything and then it was very linear yeah, and it was like this is not what Final Fantasy is. You're supposed to just that pretty much way too linear. Yeah, like it just. I I played just a few hours of it and was so like just tired of it that I ended up trading in for something. And then a few months later, it was on sale. I I tried to get back into it. I just couldn't do it. Yeah. Have you played uh, 14 the MMO? Nope. I I got it on sale for like 10 bucks and I tried it and it's I mean it's okay, but it's just World of Warcraft with Final Fantasy. Right. Game, so. Yeah, I think that's I why mean, I never well, got into it. There's a there there are differences that are pretty nice, but it's just I don't know. MMOs are all of them are kind of the same, and they're all getting pretty stale. 
Yeah. Yeah, I agree. And the nice thing about Final Fantasy is we actually don't have to wait that long to get our hands on it because it actually releases on September 30th of this year. That's so awesome. What's crazy is like everybody's been like, when's this game coming out? When's it coming out? And then they come out and say, oh, you don't have to wait that long. It's going to be in September. So I think the fact that they Until didn't... Until it gets delayed. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And the thing is, is like the, the fact that they didn't wait till E3 to say, you know, here, here it is, you know, kind of makes me feel good about you know, will they show more Final Fantasy VII stuff off at E3 since we know now when fifteen's coming out? Uh, another interesting thing that I heard that I thought was really kind of odd because there's such a big fan base for Final Fantasy VII is two things. One, Final Fantasy VII is going to be released like episodic, so there's going to yeah. be it's going to be released in in installments, and not only that, but it's also supposed to use the same new fighting system that. Final Fantasy 15 is, which I thought was really interesting because you would think a game that's such uh, so iconic and is regarded as probably the most popular Final Fantasy game of all time, you know, to remake that game, you would think that they would basically just take the same game, give it a facelift with the same fighting system and just release it. But the fact that they're going to go from a turn-based game to not a turn-based game, to me, just seems really strange. Do you think the uh, episodic releases, do you think that's something that Square is just trying to do? Because, I mean, Hitman did it, and now Final Fantasy VII. I mean, is that just kind of the trend that they're going towards, or is it just maybe a coincidence that two well, of their games have gone that far? Well, I don't know, because we haven't really seen it. I mean, the only time we've seen it up until this point has been with these uh, Telltale games, honestly. Yeah. I mean, there hasn't been another franchise that's really done it that I've seen, other than the Telltale games and now Square Enix. So Life is Strange. Well, which is also a Square Enix game. It is. Yeah. Oh. So, yeah. So we might it might be something we see to be a trend more so going forward, possibly. Mm. Um, you know, I don't know. I don't know. That appeals to me, honestly, with the Final Fantasy thing, because with certain games that I would like to play longer, but maybe other things come out or life takes more control, nice. you know, that I can't invest as much right. as I want and it gets forgotten about. Yeah. So it'd be kind of nice to just pay a little less and – then just pick up the second part when you're ready. Yeah, that'll be nice for when you leave us and move away. Yeah, <gasps> I'll have all the time with no friends. I hope you have better. Games. I hope you friends. have better internet down south. Uh, well, I know with my Verizon cell network, I was getting like over 50 meg download speeds. Oh, that's nice. It'll, It'll be nice until a hurricane hits. Yeah, oh, okay. maybe <laughs> yeah. you'll get Google Fiber Takes down there. <laughs> yeah, well, that's true. It is down there. Yeah, that's a huge thing. So. What? What? Uh, we're not gonna get into that. Yeah, we're not. This is. That's personal. I was going to ask what city, but yeah, I don't want to. You don't want to disclose that information. Yeah, it's the. Let's just say all the cities. No, no. no let's just say it's the city of Pitbull. <laughs> Mister Worldwide. <laughs> it's, Pitbull's music will be in hell. Just so you know. All right. So, Justin, do you have anything to add before we get to pick of the week? Uh, I'm I'm ready for the pick of the week. Oh, are you? I, well, I mean, I'm not personally ready, but I'm ready to hear your pick. Oh well, I'm ready to hear Maxwell's pick. Um, already knows what his is going to be because he said it earlier. Did I? Yeah. I forgot. B versus B versus a- S. S. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever that is. Um. Well, yeah. I, I think certainly as of this time frame <laughs> for the week, right? Pick pick of the week. Boom, boom, boom. <laughs> it has to be Batman v Superman because uh, it was the movie, like I said earlier, that just... Made me think it was going to be crap, and it wasn't, so I want to say it again. So you're picking it because you thought it was going to be crap? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Well, let me... Let me <laughs> I guess that means I'll have to pick so PSVR some... later. Yeah. <laughs> That's right. So something I forgot to ask you specifically about B versus S. <laughs> Batman versus Superman. Dawn of D- Justice. Yeah. Dawn D- of Justice. D-O-J. Um, <laughs> is that, how did you feel that the movie did not have any after the credit scenes? Uh, it's kind of sad because you want that little snippet of something, but at the same time, it's like, just put everything in the movie. <laughs> you know <laughs> what I mean? And that's, and that's DLC. fine. Yeah, they they honestly <laughs> yeah. with like the the extra characters for the Justice League, they could have just done that at the end. Yeah, and like she just kind of looks it up. But it, yeah, I mean, it's a two and a half hour movie, so to sit there for another ten minutes and wait for some credits ending scenes or whatever, it's yeah. like, yeah, I guess you don't really need to do that. So I so I heard that when the movie itself actually releases that 
with all the extra content that's in the the DVD release, that the movie will be three hours and fifteen minutes. That's disgusting. <laughs> yeah, and R rated. And R rated. That's true. Yeah, so I don't know how differently it's going to change, or I don't know if you've seen on the interwebs the the alternate ending with Lex. Well, it's not necessarily an alternate ending, but there was an extra scene with Lex Luthor that ties more so into Dark Side. I don't know if you've seen that or not. That uh, if you haven't, I'd highly recommend you check it out because they should have left it in the movie. But that's interesting. Yeah, because you know he's in his cell at the end of the movie. And he's talking about the bell is our, has already been rang beyond the stars or something like that. Right. And I think he was making, basically saying, you know, dark sides on his way or there's a greater threat, uh, threat pending or whatever. But I think that deleted scene had something to do with that because it took place in Superman or Zod's ship, uh, which I thought was pretty interesting. So, all right, Justin, what is your pick of the week? Boom, boom, boom. <laughs> Thank you for that. Um, well, uh, okay, I I was I was you know troubled by having to make this pick. Uh, I was in no way prepared to make one. Uh, I don't feel like I've put enough time into Quantum Break to really recommend it to you yet, but maybe next time. So I'm gonna go. I, I was gonna try to mix it up, but I'm gonna go with another game, and it's one that I've mentioned uh, quite a bit in this episode, and that is <laughs> that is Rust. It is an early access game on Steam. If you haven't picked that up uh, by now, then you just haven't been listening to us. And it's twenty dollars. And basically, it's you know, it's a, it's a online survival game. It feels like a psych experiment almost. You know, you you may be starving, and you know, maybe maybe you found a bow and arrow, and uh, you come across someone who looks like they have some stuff. They don't see you. You know, do you kill them or do you let them go? It's just it's a very tense game. It's for being early access. It feels complete. Uh, I've logged in almost 500 hours into it. I'm not proud of that. Oh my god! <laughs> yeah, part of me's proud, but you know, it's just it's a fun game. It's one of those games where you know at midnight you're like, okay, I gotta get off of here, and at three in the morning you're building a new base or something. So the whole point of the game is you know just to survive, gather resources. Uh, you know, you can form alliances with people on the server, or you can you know you can wipe everybody out if you want to. Uh, you can, you know. You can get, like I said, spears or bow and arrows, or you can work your way up to assault rifles, shotguns, and C4 and, you know, topple someone's base with it. It's, you know, each server kind of has its own story, and, you know, the people on that server kind of make that story. So it's just a really fun game. So fun. Like I said, I've put 500 hours in and three years' worth of time into it. So, yeah, that's my pick. I pick Rust, um, and and I think you should too. (laughs) Travis? Well... I have Rust, but I've played 10 minutes of it. Well, so. let's change that. Yeah, we can. I mean, I'll get nowhere close to 500 hours. But you should, you should play with us sometime. Who's us? Uh, well, Do just, you have a following? Yeah, I, I, got, I play with a couple friends. One consistently. Oh. Yeah. So when you're not here, you're playing Rust with your other friend. Yeah, pretty much. Fair enough. We used to actually have a server for it that... Uh, was on and off successful, but uh, being an admin sucks. Don't do it. Yeah, I don't want to do that. That's why I let you do all that stuff. I'm not going to do that stuff anymore. Okay. I'm just going to play. All right, that's fine. All right, what's your pick, Travis? All right, my pick, uh, <laughs> my pick of the week is actually the show that I just finished up, uh, Jessica Jones. Uh, I watched it not knowing anything about the character. I don't know anything about, I didn't know anything about Jessica Jones or her. Still doesn't? No, I do now. Okay. But uh, other than her name is J and J, like most comic book characters, they all have the same. Isn't that weird? Yeah, that is really strange. Yeah. What's the Marvel? Peter thing? Parker, you know, stuff like that. Yep. Yeah, that's yeah, that is strange. Lois Any- Lane. Yeah. Anyway, yeah. That's Matt awesome. Murdock. What? Yeah. So, uh, anyways, uh, yeah, I really enjoyed the show. Uh, there was a couple tie-ins with uh, the Daredevil series, which I thought was really interesting. Which was also a really good show uh, for season two. Uh, but yeah, Jessica Jones is a good show. If you haven't watched it, I highly recommend it. It's on Netflix, so if you don't have Netflix, go get it and then watch it. Who wouldn't have Netflix in this day and age? Uh, Maxwell. People who like to commit. That's true. Yeah, we we, brought, we talked about that earlier, Justin. I was, I was kidding. I know that. <laughs> no. That's why I immediately looked at him. Oh, okay. Well, uh, but yeah, so um, other than that, um, anybody have anything else that they want to add? Before we get to our closing part, Maxwell? No, we're good? All right, well, hopefully uh, we'll have another episode up possibly next week if we can squeeze one in before Maxwell goes south of the border on us. And then, uh, 
Yeah. And then, uh, but we appreciate everyone that's listening. This episode kind of ran a little longer than normal because uh, we had Maxwell back and we had a lot of good dialogue, I think. Uh, but we appreciate you all listening. Uh, feel free to actually email us at uh, podcast at nerdswithmikes.com. Uh, check out our Facebook page. Check out our Twitter. Uh, we would really appreciate it if you are giving this a listen and you haven't liked our Facebook page. Uh, please uh, do so. We're right at uh, less than 100 followers right now, so we'd like to get 100, uh, up to 100 likes by the end of the week. would be great. And then we want to multiply that by 100. Yeah, so that would be a lot. So let's do that. But uh, <laughs> What's that math, Travis? Come on, I, quick. I don't know. What to, <laughs> don't worry about it. Anyways, <laughs> anyways uh, also, if you have any comments or uh, feedback for us at all, feel free to let us know. Uh, hit us up on Facebook, Twitter, or the email at podcast at nerdswithmikes.com. And uh, anybody else have anything for closing? Uh, I think you hit all, all the points. Okay. All the points. That's right. Well, this has oh, been... Subscribe, uh, subscribe to the podcast on iTunes and Android. And uh, if, if you like it, leave a review. And if you don't like it, well, don't. Yeah, then don't do <laughs> yeah. any of the things that we just said. Yeah. Um, but uh, just to recap, this was episode one, Nerds with Mikes. It's a trap! <laughs> Who was that? Don't worry about it. It's Nerds with Mikes. Bye.